Pastor, I will first come. The first we come, before we got concrete, before we got wood to be a house. Jungle is our home. It's supposed to be appreciated because not many jungle anymore. All been cut down. Yeah. So we try to preserve this as our home. It's correct. Here come the boys, about two and a half thousand foot up, like halfway. To be honest, I don't really want to tell them that because I think they're having a bit of a hard time. It's a pretty tough hill and the traffic's not great either, as you can see. But they're, they're smashing it, they're getting through it. Building some character. Here comes Timmy. Keep it up, mate. Keep it up. Get in there, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Savage. Cycling across the country is like no other way of seeing a place. Naturally, you just have to spend weeks of your time way off of the tourist trail. And you end up seeing places that you just would never experience otherwise. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most beautiful place or the most pristine place. You may end up in a, in a weird version of Malaysian Tesco's on the side of a motorway somewhere, buying as many dates as you can fit in your back pocket. But at the same time, you're in a place where you know that it's proper native Malaysia. And that for us has been one of the most special experiences of, of these cycle trips. So we did just under a thousand miles in Malaysia. Uh, central Malaysia, going from Kuala Lumpur up into the highlands, right across the middle, uh, and then to the east coast down, and then similarly going the other way. But the coastal bit was probably the only let up of the jungle, uh, where we got put on slightly bigger roads. Um, yeah, lots of heat, lots of hills, lots of sweat, and lots of food. <laughs> morning so today is our second proper day of cycling um, these are the boys 
Um, and this morning, well, yesterday we did a uh, pretty beastie 90 miles over from Kuala Lumpur into uh, this town, which is called Tapa. Um, and then from Tapa, we are going to Cameron Highlands. So Cameron Highlands is basically about 5,000 foot above us right now, uh, which means our whole day, which is going to be about 40 or 50 miles or so, is basically just going to be uphill. Let's have a look at the elevation. Here you go. Look at that. So that is just from where we are now all the way up about, what is that, 40, 40 miles up? Yeah. Is that something like that? Which is ridiculous, right? But, um, yeah, we'll see you up there. It was pretty relentless, just 40 miles of being surrounded by jungle and not really, really being let out of it. Oh, it's, just, it's so green, it's amazing. I've never seen such green green before. I wanted this trip to be more about the desolateness of it and really getting out into the middle of nowhere. A hundred percent my favourite thing was the jungle. It's just fucking awesome. Nothing wants you to live in the jungle. As soon as you stop, you instantaneously feel like there will be something there that wants you to die. There's just the, the flora and fauna is awesome. The noise of it's incredible and we've seen some amazing wildlife as well. Just all you can hear around you is just the jungle and, and that's it, it's just you and the jungle. We are in the jungle by Kuala Tahan. It is hot, it is noisy. Uh, There's a lovely path, but now it's disappeared and I'm getting very nervous whilst these guys are taking, taking photographs. I'm here thinking the path will come back, the path will come back, the path will come back, because I'm sure there's so many snakes around here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I am terrified of snakes. I, yeah. I think I've only seen about three snakes in my life. And I say think because I've gone out of that situation as fast as I possibly could as soon as I saw anything that looked like one. They're just the scariest, weirdest thing, man. I don't, how could anyone like those? That's my brother with the king cobra. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> so did you rescue it? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, snake enter our house and then the guy he come here and call us uh, to catch it. Yeah. So we catch it, play with it and then we respect. So we met a legit guy called Zam. He told us some really cool stuff about the local area, aka the jungle. He was just an amazing guy and we sat there for a couple of hours just chatting away with him. Yeah. 
in this man, but tell uh, snake. Fight that, baby, fight that. And that's when you find it in the jungle? Yeah, this on the roadside, nearly hit by a car. So I try to teach my children, the snake is not really dangerous, it will treat like a lady. It's a wild snake, it's not really my pet. No. Oh, that's huge. Are there a lot of pythons around here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't take any stuff from the jungle because uh, we try to grow our own fruits here, yeah, like medicine, uh, uh, herbs. We grow ourselves. We don't take from the jungle. We just live how yeah. we are. Because it's too much uh, people destroying the jungle, so I don't want to. I try to make people understand why we have to have jungle. Mm -hmm. It's our oxygen. My favourite part of this, this adventure, I'd probably say, is the desolate rides. So, particularly when we crossed over Kenya Lake, over the top, where there was just nothing for like 50 odd miles, and then there'd be just like a little roadside camp, and that was it. And all they'd sell was rice and a couple of bottles of water. It is hot now. It is really hot out there. Um, literally, like the sweat felt like it was burning on my skin through my shirt. Um, it's going all right though. We're about 71 miles through. I think we've got about 37 to go. Um, this is the only place for the next 37 miles. And luckily, they have water and it looks like they have cutlery. So I imagine food as well to go with the cutlery, unless they're mental. What's everyone listening to? I think I was listening to Wolf Alice just before. Oh, really? Yeah. Another one still going on. Just about to set off and I looked down at my garden and in the shade it's saying 37.2 degrees. In the shade. <laughs> Killer. purely because of how hot it is and the mileage we're doing um, you know we're constantly sweating out liquid from every orifice of our body and uh, you've got to stay fueled because if you don't you just you go delirious we have made it 102.3 miles when we were meant to do a 74 mile day because there was no hotels available in the other town uh, Jack is in a bit of a state at the moment. He was shaky on the bike. That's where we did go a little bit hard for the last 23 miles, but I think it was just to get out of the heat. It's uh, probably around 40 degrees at the moment. So, we 
cycle to a town, which is 75 miles from where we left this morning. There was no hotels. Everywhere was booked out. We tried about seven or eight hotels. It was savage. So I had to cycle the extra. It's only 20 miles. 20 miles to the next destination to the next town, but I bonked hard. Bonking for the non-cyclists is when you hit about as hard, about as far as you can go, as much energy as you can put in, you start getting tingles, you can't see, you can't ride, you can't use your legs. And I hit that point today, partly because we've now hit 100 miles, partly because it was about 45 degrees out there today and partly because I don't think I fueled right and it just wasn't my day. I didn't have the energy to take me through so I'm now slumped on the sofa at the hotel that we finally made it to. That was hard. That was really, really fucking hard. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Cycled uh, up probably one of we've just cycled up one of the biggest hills we've ever cycled. So steep. Tim's legs already in agony, and uh, we've just reached what we see as like a police checkpoint. And there's not been no information about it, but there's a cycling prohibited sign. So we're about halfway up this hill. We've booked a hotel at the top and. Uh, Currently, Tim and Tom are just uh, negotiating with the uh, police, praying that they'll let us do the last little bit up to the uh, up to the town. Because we've come so far at this point, if they don't let us come past, then it's going to be an absolute nightmare. So fingers crossed. I'm not sure I can film this bit. Um, Tim's got his GoPro running, so we'll see what we can get. We're not going up there, we're just going there. 
I don't think I can physically make it up there. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Dream of the sea. But what happened? Uh, so we just got stopped by two, I think they were police officers. There's a big sign saying cycling prohibited and they started shouting and they got really arsy and then eventually they just said, yep, yeah, go. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. <laughs> well done, man. Good work. Kuala Tahan at that point out of the jungle. And it was just beautiful snaking winding road. I was going up and down. I was with two really good friends and we were on our bikes just out there. Everything was working together. I was almost like an out of body experience. How else would I get to have the opportunity to feel like this? I think you'd have to be dead not to be happy in that moment. Or yeah, it felt like the trees were gonna burst into song. It was great. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my favourite part, is just being here with my friends on our bikes and hanging out there. Malaysia means heat, sweat, spicy food, poos on the side of the road, monkeys, friendly people and the most incredible roads to cycle on. All of those things together meant I think it was one of my favourite trips I've ever been. cycling to Kuala Lumpur and I think we're going to take it nice and easy, that looks like there's some fun descents and then yeah, KL it up. We just got to Kuala Lumpur after three weeks of cycling around Malaysia. Cycling through Kuala Lumpur a second ago was absolutely mental. Just like proper attack on the senses after having been out in the jungle for the past three weeks. Riding my bike now, nothing can stop me. Prefer the small dog, cool transportation. My head is floating in a direction, in a direction. Making connection, long time I'm coming. Yeah, we just had a great time. You can't take any of this 
to seriously because you're literally just out with your friends on your bike having fun each day. We cycled up three very large mountains and did a lot of days over 100 miles at 140 degrees but at the end of the day we had last of every ride we enjoyed most of the moments of it. The people here have been great. We've seen beautiful countryside. Just take care of the place you be, respect the people that you meet. Get involved, have as much fun as possible. See you later. I do it in the car here, like in the tiny little town, and it kind of went from there. Really. Um, they've been riding bicycles, bicycles, all over Malaysia, all over. I don't like doing public presentations. <laughs> all the way from Kuala Lumpur. And Gecko has ridden all the way in Tom's bag. 90 miles. 90 miles from Kuala Lumpur. I was Kuala wondering Lumpur. why it's so heavy. Yeah.